Okay. Uh, is screen visible? Uh, yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So today we will just look at the, some of the uh, topic in the Jenkins, and from the next week we can start with the Docker, Docker and uh, ECS container, and then followed by the Terraform and Kubernetes. Okay. So we have covered lots of things yesterday. So now uh, yesterday is a few things I just forgot to explain, like uh, how we can set up the email notification. Uh, when we set up the CI CD pipeline in the Jenkins, so every build it might be failure or success that uh, status should be triggered on the particular email address uh, within like our uh, any Slack channel group or any particular email address, which is our team. OK, so we can just get the notification on the timely right. This build uh, got succeed or fail. Okay. If that build gets fail, this so at least we can go to that logs and check what is the reason like that. For that purpose, we can just set up. For testing purpose, I just use my uh, Gmail ID. Okay, but in the organization, as a real time, there uh, you need to create a separate uh, unique uh, email address there for the just for the alert notification, and you can use that only. Okay, not for the any particular users, because if that users left the organization, then that email ID will be blocked, right? So in that case, just use unique one. Which is generic like any creative Jenkins alerts at some domain.com something and you can use that with the SMTP details. So I will uh, we will see today this email notification then. So during this setup I face lots of lots of issues because I use uh, Gmail. So there are multiple security settings I need to disable and the I need here Gmail password will not work. We, we need to create the app password. I will show you that the link from where we can generate the app password because they change the due to the security concern. So we have, your email address and password will not work. I troubleshoot lots of hours to get this and finally I found out this solution. OK, one one of the GitHub community page. So I have just make note of that. So this is the password look like for the app password. We need to copy paste as it is. OK. Then uh, I will show you how to integrate a webhook integration. Because in the real time we use webhook integration only. Uh, we have seen the whole SCM or build periodically, which is depend on the uh, job uh, specific. If you want to trigger only for the particular time period, then you can set up build periodically or or the for other uh, scenario based uh, pole SCM. OK, so you might get this central questions like what is the difference between pole SCM build periodically and this web integ webhook integration. Webhook integration is a, a real time. Whenever you set up the Webhook integration, so immediately once developer push the code changes, so you will uh, your build will trigger automatically. Okay, pipeline. So I have added the steps uh, steps as well. So I will show you that. Then I have deployed one multi stage pipeline sample, so I can show you that. So next week we can quickly show this how we can set up this sample HTML or PHP application on your EC2 instance okay, as a target. So let's see. So first email notification. As we know uh, by default Jenkins uh, will not get all the options. So for that we need uh, to install the Namjo, Namjo, plugins. Uh, yeah, Namjo, sorry, I'm disturbing you. Request you to mm. can you uh, yesterday session? Can you give the overall uh, just like briefing? OK, we have covered the GitHub Vagera, no? Hmm. So, OK, the job. So you are clear on this, how to set up this job or folder structure? Uh, yes. Okay. It's very simple, like just create on the new or you can generate like a, let's say test environment for just click on the folders. So it will create as a folder. If you want to maintain this folder access, you can just enable this option and you can add any particular users for the security front of you. Because in the real time, we don't want to give unnecessary access to everyone who has a Jenkins access. So we can restrict through here. And otherwise, if you don't want for just now. Testing purpose. So this is the folder structure day one test. So if I go to uh, test, you can create the new pipeline from here, a new job. So this is for the freestyle, which is the, for the simple use cases. If I add here, let's say. DevOps job, for example. 
select freestyle and just click on OK. So in here you will see lots of option. Either you can set up this job for the project based uh, user wise, like if you want to give any your colleague access only he should build this project. So you can just enable this option and just you can add that user. This one of this option is for your uh, deleting the old uh, builds because keeping the old uh, multiple builds build history. It's not good idea because it will consume the your uh, slave server. Uh, EBS volume hard hard drive. OK, so for that is the reason we can just keep last uh, maybe five or ten builds you can keep and you can remove the older one automatically by giving here the number. Uh, not here, here one. OK, this is for the days to keep. This is for the max build to keep. OK, if you want to keep uh, last five days builds, so it might be your 100 builds or something. Uh, we don't know. It's depend on the what you are building a daily basis. So based on idea is to keep at least. This number for the maximum build, so you will uh, get a free, free space automatically. It will automatically re remove. OK. So here this option like restrict where this project can be run. So this is just to give the your uh, slave server. Slave server label, so whatever the la label we provided when we configure the slave server. So that label we should give we should give here proper labeling. OK, even if you can type here, it will automatically pop up. OK. Like this, you can just select and you can just go further. OK, so this job will run from the your slave server, not from the master one. OK, is that clear? Yes. Okay. And your slave server can be Linux based or Jenkins based. Uh, sorry, Linux based or Windows based. It depends on the project, which project you are building like .NET base or any other which supports Windows or Linux. OK, so on based on that, you can just select the slave server. Let's say if this pipeline or job you are config configuring for the .NET base application or your any IS website hosting. So in that case, you can add your Jen Jen Jenkins slave server as a Windows and you can give the proper labeling there and that label you can give here for the Windows. OK. If you select by mistakenly Linux based server, so it might give the a error. Some uh, depend on this package not support because .NET build you cannot host on that. Under source code management, it's a uh, you need to give the repository URL. How you can copy the repository URL? Just whatever the repo you are using. Let's say this repository. So here you will get the option cloning. Either you can use so, uh, as a, yeah. So uh, suppose, uh, suppose uh, like, like we do uh, like uh, one uh, one hundred server. Okay, so suppose that server are located in different kinds of VPN. They having different kind of VPN. So for each kind of VPN, we need to deploy uh, is, uh, different kind of uh, Jenkins, or uh, we can do the natting over here as well for a different kinds of VPN servers. That is a configuration of the networking. Okay, not the Jenkins. So if you have a let's say. Uh, good question. So let's say you are you have you are Jenkins in one VPC and your production server might be in different VPC. In, in if they you can consider as a situation, okay. So in that case, you can configure the VPC pairing something, okay. okay. And you can use private IP address there. Okay. It's 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 not like that. We need to deploy the uh, means uh, Jenkins in, in uh, different kind of VPC kind of thing. Means, uh, no, no. we are using the netting concept only there, right? Yeah. Oh, and you can use private private IP address when you configure the slave node agent. You can instead of giving public IP address, you can give the private IP address over there. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. And uh, whatever the slave yeah. servers are there, it will be required in the one range only. Subnet mask and other uh, things are uh, in the same. Subnetting we can. Uh, if you so, want to keep uh, the, in the... Thing is that the thing is that how the slave servers and uh, Jenkins master server are communicated with each other. They required some of the communication for that communication, which ports and other things are required. So for that, we need SSH, to SSH port. Only SSH ports. Yes, yes. 
so yesterday i uh, forgot sorry. because i i was already open that security group so that is the reason i might miss that point but i already open the security group ssh port so that's why he is not giving that kind of error but when you do the practical you can just purposefully you can just block that port and you can just try if you get that kind of connection timeout or something then you can just you will realize so you can just open that port there so i use single security group for the slave as well and i open the port number 22 that's why we we not get that issues yesterday okay it's already open for the public so that's why he's not giving the error but you can when you do the practicals you can just remove this entry and you can try if you get the error 20 uh, timeout something or connection timeout something then you can just enable that that is network level configuration you need to do if you have a slave servers in different way but ideally we create in the same vpc whatever the jenkins slave server you are going to create any other question uh, no Similar, we need to open so the port for the RDP as well, 3347. Sorry? Similarly, we need to open the port for the Windows based uh, server like 3347, right? 3389. 3389, sorry. 38. Yeah. Just copy HTTP base. OK, or if you want to add through the SSH base, you can just do that as well. You need to add the public key here. OK. So we already configured the credentials here as a HTTP base. So we can copy that clone URL. Simple and credentials I have already added, but if you want to add, I have shown yesterday like from the add button, go to the Jenkins credentials provider, select username and password and here give the your uh, GitHub username and password here. OK, and you can just save it and that credentials you can select from here. OK, so this is for the GitHub credentials. So I just copy and uh, selected. And here master branch is not there. This is just a main branch. This is the format of the branching we need to specify in Jenkins origin and the branch name. OK. So <clears throat> you can just uh, cross verify this which branch you want to set up. Let's say we are going to for the main branch, but in the real time cases, if you are deploying from any feature branch or something, so you, that branch should be you can update here. OK. Now there are multiple other options as well. Trigger builds remotely from script build build periodically like a scheduler base. If you want to build this job, any specific timing like every five minutes or any specific day, time of the day, like every night you want to build something. So in that case, you can use this feature. Otherwise, there are other option as well. Polysium. OK, Polysium is just to. Similar to cron job schedulers, but. Uh, every commits changes, it will check the your, your uh, repository branch changes every time. So if you detect that changes, OK, so you can start uh, your pipeline immediately. So difference between this Polysium and build periodically is configuration wise scheduler is the same like you need to configure the scheduler like this format cron job. But the difference in this case is like build periodically is compulsory build your pipeline. So whatever the doesn't matter if there are if any changes happen or not in your repository or branch. OK, so it, it will build whatever the available in that uh, branch. And in the Polysium only if you detect changes, any push commit happens only at that time he will trigger the build. Is that clear? Because this might question you comes in the entry panel. Build periodically if you set every five minutes, for example, so it doesn't matter if your branch or repo as a branch have any new commits added or not, it will start building your pipeline. But Polysium will not build every time only if developers push his commit, then if you get the det changes detected, then only he start the uh, pipeline. 
but the threshold like you set up five minutes so he will execute every five minutes to check the changes happen or not if only changes detected then only he trigger the pipeline otherwise no okay I hope it's clear with this difference. Yes. And and GitHub Git uh, GitHub hook basically it's a real time based uh, HTTP call. You can say if to now because these are the scheduler base like uh, similar to cron job. So every uh, few minutes second uh, sorry not second few mm -hmm. minutes you want you can set up. But a GitHub hook is a similar uh, like a real time base. Once developer push his commits immediately he will start the your pipeline. And the real time cases every project use this method. GitHub uh, GitHub webhook. OK, I will show you today how we can set up the GitHub. It's very simple process. But uh, these things are clear now. Yes, yes, or in, or in doubts. OK, good. So I can come out from this job now because I want to show that job which are configured. If you want to delete this job, you can just simply. From here. Edit project. This also security concern comes if you give anyone full access so he can delete your entire project. Let's say this is the folder structure and in the dev folder structure you have multiple environments and the pipelines. If you if you if, the, if any users your Jenkins user has full access and by mistakely if he deleted the complete folder, what will happen? You will lo lose your complete pipeline, right? So that is the additional challenge like a security concern. You need to give only specific permission to specific pe people only. OK, we have already seen that in the project based matrix. OK, security point of view and uh, second thought is take your Jenkins backup regularly to avoid this kind of situation. OK. So now coming to that uh, email notification, let me open the. This tab in the new tab when duplicates. I want to show so every configuration you will find in this. Manage Jenkins go back to the dashboard. Go to the manage Jenkins. Because by default Jenkins will not show you the every uh, options and the features we need to install the plugins first. OK, this is a plugins based applications. So for that uh, installation. We need to install the. Email extension plugin. OK. I have given the all the steps so you can just follow that. Just search. Just cl click on this available plugins. Search here. I have already installed that. OK, let me go to this install plugins. This one we I have already installed. You can see. OK. If in your if in your case, if you don't definitely it will not by default installation. So you can just search that and just click on that uh, particular. Uh, plugins and just click on this installation. OK, so you will that plugins will install. This one. Email extension plugins, OK. Even you can get the description as well here. Just to give the additional idea. So once you configure that plugins, come back to your job. Let's say this one, day one. Come to this. OK, the second uh, one more option is pending. Go back to your manage Jenkins once again. Under this system configuration, OK, first step is you need to install the plugins. Now second step, come click on this system configuration. And search email notification. Here extended email notification add the whatever the SMTP server details if you are using for the project base so there might be you can take it from your network team or something. OK, they will give you the SMTP details uh, host name you need to add for a Gmail. We can you can just check SMTP.gmail.com SMTP port number 465 for the SSL. If you click on this advance, you will need to add the credentials here. Your email cred credentials, OK? As you can see, it's all I have selected, but if you don't have 
click on this add button and again same thing like create the credentials username and password add your username email address and password here okay so as i said default password will not work for the gmail so as a google security you need to install the create the app password how you can create the app password just visit this link open in your browser you can uh, whichever email address you want to set up in this jenkins you can just select from here and add your password here uh, login basically just login okay you can see here i have created yesterday for the practice jenkins but if you want to create for the new you can just give the name here jenkins deployment and you can just simply create it okay so what will happen it will create app password like this this format 16 digit and you don't need to remove this space copy paste as it is okay just don't make this kind of mistake as it is jo hai, wo just copy yahan pe theek hai copy paste wahan pe kar lena hai just copy paste here okay in the credentials configuration Just enter your email address address here and in the password copy and paste as it is. OK, that's it. And you can just say once added, you can select from here. Use this enable option like SSL and TLS. Scroll down. You can see other options like default recipients. I will show you this. What is the meaning of this default recipients in the Jenkins jobs? You need to add your admin email address or if you are you are managing, you can add your email address as well. Then come little bit scroll down. You can see the default subject line. Project name, build number, build status. OK, I will show you that. What is the meaning of this? Then uh, attachment size, you can decide if you can click on this question mark. You can see. Attachment size for the build uh, jobs. Little bit scroll down, you will see one more option email notification. OK, here you can do the same setting Add the SMTP server detail smtp.gmail.com. If you are doing practice from your Gmail address, OK, click on advanced button. Enable this option. Use SMTP authentication. Add your username, whatever the username Gmail address you want to use in the password. You can just simply add password here. This is the normal simple. You don't need to add credentials there, which we have seen above. OK, you can as simple as you can just paste the password here, which is not your email address password. OK, here it should be your app password, which we have generated 16 digit number. Copy paste as it is. OK, use this option. Use SSL and TLS as well. You can just test and just add the port number 465. Email address and that's it. Now, if you want to test this configuration is working fine or not properly, just enable this option. Add the email address. Let me add my email address to check. Support at the rate DevOps with com, and just click on test configuration. If your everything is well with your SMTP details and the configuration which we have selected, so it will not give any error. Okay. If there are any issues like port config port number given or any credentials, you might get the authentication fail or something. Okay. So yesterday I have done lots of R and D here, so that's why it's finally I got it. So you can see email was sent successfully. If I open this now, this is my outlook. You can see I got the email successfully. Okay, this is a test email from Jenkins like this. So now this is the second. Uh, this is the steps we have we have completed. Now let me save it. Okay, now go back to your actual job configuration which we have in this day one. This is the job in configuration. Any questions till now? I think it's very simple, right? Just you need to give the uh, username and password, but the main idea was uh, due to the security issues from the Google side, you, your default email address, uh, email address password will, no, will not work here. You need to generate the app password, okay? which we have seen the process. Just scroll down a little bit. At the end of your job, you can see. 
uh, you will see this option pulled build post build action okay in the post build action so oh, let me open the new job so you can get more idea let me configure new job for you just click on new item and give the job name like email notification just click on the freestyle project here and just click OK. So here you can give your repository URL. Let's say this one. HTTPS. Copy here. Select the credentials, OK, which we have added for the GitHub repo. Change the branch name, which is the default main. And here scroll down a little bit. You will see build step and build build uh, sorry post build action. So build step is basically during the deployments, whatever the if you, if you want to take any folder backups or a before deployment, you if you want to run anything like uh, stopping the service or something. So that action you can add here build step. Post build action means once uh, deployment complete successfully completed, then what action you want to take? OK, post build action. So here you can add, let's say my build is successfully executed. So now I want to send this alerts to any specific person like whichever you are using in the team member. So you can add this under this post build action. Here just click on this and just scroll down a little bit. You will see that option editable email notification. OK, this one. Just click on that. This window it will pop up and now. You, you can see here, OK, default recipients. We have seen in the system configuration. Let me open the new one. Go back to your manage Jenkins. Your uh, system configuration. If I search. Default uh, notification. Did you remember that? Anyone? here default recipients okay so whichever the email address we have given here it will send the automatic notification to do to that person okay so now if you want to send the, this build job notification to other members so i can just give the name by just giving the comma separated you can see the description here comma separated list of email address can anyone give me your email address You can just paste in the chat box so I can configure here. Can anyone give me the chat in the chat box email address? One second, I'm here. Yes, yes. Okay. Shared. So I just copied it and I can just paste it here. OK, you can add multiple email, email address here by giving the comma. Let me add my Gmail address. OK. Like this, you can add multiple email address and once that is done, now just scroll down. You can see here attach build log. So here I want to attach the build logs because when you get the email address yeah, notification from the Jenkins, so whatever the build log happen, it will attach as a email address in the email address. OK, in the zip format. So I can attach that and one more settings I need to do. Trigger OK when this email trigger trigger should happen. So either you can add any only in only for the failure cases or. 
I would don't want in the failure case. I want in the every cases like always. It might be your build fail or success. Whatever happens, I need to send the job build build status. OK, I can remove the developer list here and I'm just adding the recipient list which we have added above. OK, and that's it. You can just now save. Our pipeline is configured now. OK, if I trigger now build, let's see what will happen. If I go to the detail. You can see this job is running from the master master servers because I don't have any slave server now, so you can see the logs here running as on a system. And you can see the status last sending email for trigger always as we have set up. OK, and. Sending email to whatever the email address we have configured. OK. And uh, last status is success or failure. So now. If I check here. OK, I have not added the support email address here. So Siddharth, can you check your email address? You might receive one yeah. email notification. Yeah. Received, right? Yeah, yeah I received. OK, or so you can see. Yeah. yeah, you can see project name, your email notification, subject line and the build one and the status. OK. So you can see this and you will get this build log build dot log file. So it's basically in short, it's a your job logs. If I. So these these are the logs, right? So these logs will generate in the zip format and it will attach to the email address when the trigger trigger happens for the email notification. Let me add my email address here. Support one. Where I can add just giving the comma. Support. And just save it. OK, now if I trigger this build now. The build successfully triggered. You can see my recent email address has been added and if I check outlook now, I should get it. See. Either if you have a access of the Jenkins server, you can simply click on this link and it will automatically automatically redirect to your Jenkins servers. OK, right. if not, then you can just. Download this log file and you can see the output like this. OK. The one more benefit of this email notification is like. Because in the project uh, there might be cases like only few people will have access like your DevOps team, but let's say your manager doesn't might have it might not have access of the Jenkins servers. So how we can check your detailed logs of the builds? OK, so once you add his email address in the configuration, he will automatically get the status of whatever the builds you are triggering. OK. So any doubts in this configuration? No. OK, it's pretty simple, right? Yes, OK, everything is simple. Yeah, but whenever we are doing the practice that time, we will understand. <laughs> yeah, definitely, because initially I also faced that issue like a Gmail address security blocker that email address password it was not taking. So finally I got that answer like uh, you need to use the app password which this document I will attach to our WhatsApp group and the share folder as well, so you can just follow. And now we can see one more options. Like uh, webhook integration, OK? So how you can set up the webhook integration? Let me. Okay. So you can see. What is a webhook? Webhook is basically, as I just said, so uh, let me open the theoretical de definition. As a real time base, your trigger mechanism. Where? But whenever the developer push any comments or any events happen on your repository or branch, OK? Repository means in short branch level, OK? So in that case, if you configured webhook integration in your Jenkins pipeline, so it's a real time base once 
as soon as once it detected the changes on your branch, he will uh, trigger your pipeline. It's a work as a HTTP request. It's a HTTP based call. Some, if you have a search. Uh, sometime, uh, my code is not uh, completed. So how we can define that? Code is not completed means? For example, I have uh, doing some things. Okay. Hmm. On your local machine? On uh, our local systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. But sometimes mm -hmm. my local system is getting some problems and other things. So I need to commit that uh, code to. Remote location, uh, remote branch. Remote branch. Mm -hmm. So after that, how it will be work? Yeah, I will show you that. There is, a, as I said yesterday, we need to configure that rule. So let me go on that. Let's say. I want to set up the webhook integration for this repository demo devops repo. OK, so once you open that repository, you will see this option settings. Every user will not see this option. OK, only who has the maintainer access in the real time base. That person only see this option settings. Otherwise, if you have only normal user access like developer or something, you will not see see this option settings. OK, I, this is a free tier account I am using for the GitHub, so that's why I have a full access. But in the real time cases, if you have only maintainer access or who has the maintainer access, only that person should see this option settings and this other set options here. OK, just to clear on this role level. Permissions on the branch level. Uh, sorry, repo level. So once you click on that particular repository and the setting option, you will see from the left side webhook. OK. In the webhook, you can just simply click on add webhook. OK, so I have already added, so let me open that. You need to log in on your GitHub. He will ask one more confirmation for the security point of view. So here you, he will ask about the payload URL, which is nothing but your Jenkins URL. OK. This one. It might be your domain or name or your IP address, whatever in the project you are using. As simple as Jenkins URL will be here. You need to put and the, in the payload URL. OK, after that you need to add this line. GitHub hyphen webhook and slash is mandatory here. OK, if you don't, if you skip this, uh, this uh, slash, it will not uh, work. OK, so just slash is mandatory at the end of the this word. So you need to just carefully on that. This is the configuration from the GitHub site and content type. Just select this application JSON here. That is the option like just the push event, like which events would you like to trigger this webhook? If I select just the push event, so whenever the build, uh, sorry, developer push his commit on the branch on the remote level, so every time he will detect as the changes and he will start your pipeline. If you configure like uh, like uh, let me send every send me everything like if a developer uh, execute the commands like git pull or git fetch so every whatever the actions he is performing every time the build will trigger so and that is not a good option so we can just select at least only whenever the commit changes happen on your remote branch only that time your pipeline should trigger okay or the second option also let me select individual events individual events are lots of rules are there like uh, any Commit comments, deploy keys, deployments, discussion happens, folks, issue comments like that. Okay. But as simple as we don't need to configure these all rules, as simple as we can just based on the commits happen, because at the end of the day, we trigger the pipeline when the any commits happen. Okay. As simple as. So that is the reason we can keep as simple as the, the only based on the push event. Okay. And make this active and just click on add here. Okay. This is setting from the repository side on the, in the GitHub. Now coming to your Jenkins jobs. So let's say you have this job ready. If you go to configure in the Jenkins, just one option you need to enable that. Which one? This one. As we have seen in the build periodically, polySM. Here is the option GitHub GitHub hook trigger for the GitSM polling. Okay. 
just enable that option and just save it. That is the configuration only. Now you can see I have already tested two builds here. Now let me go to this repository. And let me add. Any content or any files you can test whatever you want to test. OK. I'm just doing this graphically now. Let me add any files like. Uh, testing webhook for example okay integration and just save it like save means commit okay once this is successfully done so let me go back to that job you can see immediately he, he started the pipeline so this is completely real time based he will not wait a couple of seconds or minutes like that okay so which we have seen in the polysium or build periodically if i do more commits or add more files let me try to add files OK, add file, create a new file. Give the file name like a web, any file name you can give webhook jobs. Add the content. Hello. This is the webhook. OK, and just save commit these changes. You can add commit message here adding new file. OK. So real time in the real time cases, you need to give the proper commit message here when you working as a project. OK, so that in the from the commit message, if anyone can or your tech architect or manager can easily understand in this commit what you are what changes you are doing. OK. So give the proper commit message here. Let's say you are adding any menu button in your application so you can just keep short and clear the description okay simple and clear so you can just add the minimum one line of description here so what changes you are pushing okay and just click on commit changes so when this is file this file is done let me check now see build 4 is triggered any doubt in this So this is a work on the push base. That is that is a good idea. Now coming to one more thing. So let me check. I have given the exact steps, so don't try to copy this uh, copy paste as it is. OK, you can generate your, your own. Otherwise you will uh, get the issues. Webhook configuration we have done. I have added the steps here. So this one I can show you the next week. Uh, then uh, after that we can start with the. Other topic Docker and. Going for forward, but in the other uh, real time uh, projects uh, when uh, when I set up completely as I said uh, initially. Once I configure the real time based jobs for you, I can show you each uh, end to end pipeline. OK, so just don't worry about that. I need to I need some time to set up everything as a real time base. So that's why I just need more time on that. Because that will give more uh, confidence and idea to face any interviews if they ask any cross question or any pipeline pipeline related issues. So I I'm the, my planning is to basically configure end to end pipeline which there we would have a build build steps your sonar sonar keep integration okay and other uh, stages so that is the reason I need some time for that because in the 
hurry i don't want to teach you i i need to configure the pipeline in the details okay so this is one more job i want to show you multi stage which we can write as a pipeline script till as of now we have seen about the freestyle project right so this is the concept of uh, yesterday someone asked right rohit or jatin i think jatin asked multi stage if i open this or oh, let me create one more so you can get the idea let me open the duplicate tab so here if i click on the new item and give the uh, item name like job name jenkins multi stage okay where the multiple stages involved in this case don't select freestyle project just select the pipeline okay you can see the description as well here to add the multiple script and just click on okay here we can add the definition pipeline as a script okay so i have just generated generated from the chat gpt which i configured here let me open that and just copy paste here in the definition file okay or if you want any sample you can just uh, get it from here as well like a uh, hello world or any github plus maven base just for the reference you can see and let's say scripted pipeline you can see the format here like this okay as we have just sample file here so i can just copy where the build test deploying on uh, staging deploying on production so these are the stages involved here okay and post success i am just i i have this is not a fully end to end pipeline this is just a stages and just i'm passing the echo message based on this sample file okay and you can see the branch name as well here so just click apply and save it okay if i trigger this now build now it will show like this if we click on this complete output you can see started by admin user pipeline started then you can see all the stages like this okay if i search let me try to search any scenario base here so in that case you don't need to use any manual or console based options like we have seen in the freestyle project so jenkins files you can write down with the multiple stages and you can just add in the definition file and you can run that i have not configured in the real time but i have seen with, with the other my friends project where they use this kind of uh, scripting script file if i search here like act as a jenkins master and give me best real time base sin jenkins man thamna bala jenkins multi stage pipeline script for dev test and prod environment to deploy any sample hello world application even in the batch as i said yesterday to the ganesh hmm. so there might be any more core level concept i might miss in the batch but don't worry going forward i will uh, get those concept uh, on the youtube youtube channels you will get that notification if any any other troubleshooting areas or any pipeline setup or any other things i will launch that video on the channel
you can see this is one of the example like uh, let me check what he has mentioned environment configuration like image name hello world docker registry name stages he has added script let me try as it is copy paste let's see what will happen this is just the, uh, for the sample okay Let me replace here. And if I try to build it. It's failed because it's not a fully working and tested as script, so we can ignore that. But the actually the idea to showing this multi stage build that's to uh, just to check like how we can add the definition file here okay if you want to check particular stages logs you can just get your mouse or mouse over there and you can just click on that you will see the definition message as it's not a fully uh, tested pipeline so you will not get the detailed message like what is the reason behind this failure but in the real time cases we can get that okay uh, here we have get more details. Like uh, because we have not added any Docker here. There might be that cases OK, but OK, then don't worry. So we're going forward. I will uh, get this working and I will add any sample. Applications for the deployment with the multi stages. But at least idea is clear, right? How we can set up that multi stage builds. And the freestyle project. Any other questions from anyone? OK, I will check with this one. And I will let you know on the message. Any other questions uh, before wrap up? Because I think that's all for the two days. Soon from next week, we can start with the new chapter. ECS container and your Docker, then going forward, Terraform and Kubernetes. Those are the important topics, so we can focus more on that as well. Obviously, Jenkins as well. So and Jenkins and now most of the company is shifting to you are GitLab CICD pipeline or your GitHub actions. OK, so that is a very uh, simple as as base this one. You need to just maintain the YAML file over there and in the YAML file you can add the multiple stages build test and in that things you can pass as the variables there. I will show you that as well going forward. Any other questions from anyone? No, sir. No, we are good. Yeah, we are good. Okay.